is that he says, you know, I believe, I don't think he, does he use the word I believe or I wish? He used the word I wish. <clears throat> I use the word believe. And the reason believe is because no corporate entity can believe. It can't enter into a contract. It can't believe anything. It can't give consideration. All of those things that we as man can do, they can't. Hale versus Engel. I love it so much because it's so descriptive. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom, which means what? No contract except the protections of his life and property. What is that telling you? There's no specific contract that requires you to do anything in order for the state to be required to protect your life and property, no matter who you are, whether you're a more or a smore or whatever the hell you want to be. Why? Because it is an entity that was created with certain parameters. Okay, so that was Colin citing Hale v. Henkel, which is a 1906 Supreme Court case which he and other people within the sovereign citizen movement believe states that uh, you and me as individuals owe the state zero duties whatsoever. And they often expand it to argue that because of this case, you therefore don't have to pay taxes, you don't have to obey traffic laws, you basically don't have to do anything. So if we go to the actual text of the decision, this is how they read it. Quote, the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He owes no duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. Now, as you can probably guess, this quote is sherry-picked and out of context, and it's basically a quote mine. Uh, Hale v. Henkel is actually uh, a case that discusses whether or not uh, a corporation has to produce documents if subpoenaed. And uh, the, 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 the paragraphs that they're reading from uh, is discussing whether the difference between whether an individual has to pr produce documents or whether a corporation needs to produce documents. Uh, quote, there's a clear distinction in this particular between an individual and a corporation and the latter, the latter would be the corporation. A corporation has no right to refuse to submit its books and paper. Now, here's the part that they, they misquote. He owes no such duty to the state. The individual, uh, uh, in other words, the individual does not have to show documents in, uh, in response to a subpoena. Among his rights are a refusal to incriminate himself and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest and seizure except under a warrant of law. Uh, or to rephrase it, Hale v. Henkel does not say that you owe zero duties to the state. What, th what this quote in context actually says is that you owe no such duty. There is no duty to respond, uh, produce documents in response to a subpoena. The way these guys quote it is that they eliminate the, the such, and the, <laughs> they, they, they quote it to mean that you owe no duties to the state whatsoever. And I should probably add that, that the court even states that, that the right of refusal isn't absolute. Uh, Quote, we think it quite clear that the search and seizure clause of the Fourth Amendment was not intended to interfere with the power of courts to compel through a subpoena, a deuces, tecum, the, produ the production upon a trial of documentary evidence. Uh, as remarked in Summers v. Mosley, it would be utterly impossible to carry out the administration of justice without this writ. So under certain circumstances, you can actually be required to produce uh, documentary evidence, documents, and papers. But that's more complicated. Uh, but the takeaway here is that no, Hale v. Enkel does not say that you don't have to pay taxes and you owe the state no duty whatsoever.